The war in Ukraine is approaching its third year, the enemy continues to attack in Donbass, and the West is already looking for ways to sit down at the negotiating table. Ukraine faces a tough winter amid possible Kremlin strikes on energy facilities while the West is still delaying its aid, the Wall Street Journal reports. Ukrainian forces are trying to inflict as many losses on the enemy as possible by defending this or that section of the front. However, it is worth noting that the Kremlin does not spare its soldiers in order to achieve its goals. Experts suggest that this winter there will be power outages in Ukraine like in the summer of 2024. In Donbass, after capturing Ugledar, the enemy has set its sights on Pokrovsk and Chasiv Yar, another minus in the political arena. If Trump becomes the new US president, he and his fellow party members are already saying that no more military aid should be expected from Washington. And the Russian Federation has agreed on a budget for 2025 to 2027, which includes a 25% increase in defense spending. Zelensky made a working visit to the US and EU countries to present a new plan for victory. However, the White House reacted coolly to the plan, saying that some points were repeated. Advisor to the head of the Office of the President of Ukraine, Podolyak, made it clear that the new plan includes economic, diplomatic, military and political steps. At the same time, the West must give the go-ahead to fire long-range missiles deep into the Russian Federation. The West fears an escalation of the conflict, and Podolyak stressed that without additional military assistance, the war will drag on. Western political scientists say that more and more Ukrainians want the war to end, but no one wants to make territorial concessions to the Kremlin. Russia is also suffering heavy losses on the battlefield to achieve Putin's goals. September was the deadliest month for Putin's army since February 2022. Up to 1,200 occupiers were sent to Kobzon every day. Now all of Putin's hopes on the battlefield will depend on who becomes the next head of the White House, said US Colonel John Nagel. Ukrainian military officials also do not believe that a peace agreement without victory will allow Putin to attack again in the future to finally wipe Ukraine off the world's political map. A New Jersey transit commuter train struck a tree on the tracks Monday, leaving the train operator dead and more than a dozen people injured. The accident occurred shortly after 6 a.m. just north of the Roebling Station in Mansfield Township, NJ Transit said in a statement. There were 36 passengers aboard the River Line train, and television news video showed a large piece of the tree under the front of the train. At least 16 people were treated for injuries not considered life-threatening, NJ Transit said. Authorities worked to determine how the tree ended up on the tracks. River Line service was suspended in both directions between the Roebling and Trenton train stations, and sections of some nearby roads, including U.S. Highway 130, closed as authorities investigated. Fighter jets took off from Shinshu Air Base, Taiwan, after China held large-scale military exercises surrounding Taiwan and its outlying islands Monday. China deployed an aircraft carrier along with warplanes, in a move that underscores the tense situation in the Taiwan Strait. China's defense ministry said the drills were a response to the Taiwanese president's refusal to concede to Beijing's demands that self-ruled Taiwan acknowledge itself as a part of the People's Republic of China under the rule of the Communist Party. The drills came four days after Taiwan celebrated the founding of its government on its National Day, 
during which Taiwan's President Lai ching te said in a speech that China has no right to represent Taiwan and declared his commitment to resist annexation or encroachment. The presidential office of Taiwan called on China to cease military provocations that undermine regional peace and stability and stop threatening Taiwan's democracy and freedom. A map aired on China's state broadcaster CCTV showed six large blocks encircling Taiwan indicating where the military drills are being held, along with circles drawn around Taiwan's outlying islands. China's defense ministry has not said how long the drills will last. China deployed its Liaoning aircraft carrier for the drills, and CCTV showed a J-15 fighter jet taking off from the decks of the carrier, though the exact location of the carrier is unclear. The PLA's Eastern Theater Command spokesperson Navy Senior Captain Li Shi said the Navy, Army Air Force, Missile Corps were all mobilized for the drills, as it was an integrated operation. This is a major warning to those who back Taiwan independence and a signifier of our determination to safeguard our national sovereignty, Li said in a statement on the service's public media channel. Taiwan's defense ministry said it had deployed its warships to designated spots in the ocean where they'd carry out surveillance and stand at ready. It also deployed its mobile missile and radar groups on land to track the vessels at sea. As of Monday morning, they had tracked 25 Chinese warplanes and seven warships and four Chinese government ships, though it did not specify what types of ships they were. China held similar large-scale exercises after Lai was inaugurated in May. Lai continues the eight-year rule of the Democratic Progressive Party that rejects China's demand that it recognize Taiwan is a part of China. Also on Monday, China's Taiwan Affairs Office announced it was sanctioning two Taiwanese individuals, Puma Shen and Robert Cao, for their work in promoting Taiwan independence. Shen is the co-founder of the Kuma Academy, a non-profit that trains civilians on wartime readiness. Cao donated $32.8 million to fund the Academy's training courses. Shen and Cao are forbidden to travel to China, including Hong Kong.